a hallelujah this morning, the Most High. We get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Most high. 
Woo, I'm so excited about understanding your potential. I mean, I'm really beginning to understand why we had to go back to the original intent. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Because you really began to walk in the authority of the Most High God when you realized your original intent was kings and queens to rule and reign in the earth realm. When you begin to come into that understanding, you really begin to walk in the principles of the Most High God because you know the principles is the things that will work in your life. See, with men, things might be impossible, but you really begin to realize that with the Most High God, all things are possible and that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You really begin to understand that. So I see why we had to first walk through understanding your potential before you can maximize your potential. Because first of all, we don't really understand who we are and the authority that the Most High God has given us. He has the power, but he has given us the authority. And because our identity was stolen, we don't know who we are. Because the word was, you know, they added to the word, took away from the word. We don't recognize who we are. We don't look in the mirror and say, I'm made in his image, in his likeness. So therefore, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We don't understand that. So I'm so excited that the Most High God, in a 365 days of a character check, he's coming for you to understand your potential. We don't walk around with our heads hung down. We know for a fact who we are as we understand our potential. We don't walk around like I said on yesterday. Walking around defeated in areas of our lives. We're more than overcomers, more than conquerors. We know right now the God that we serve. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That there's nothing impossible for us. We realize as we walk in the principles of the Most High God, as we activate these principles, we begin to walk in the order of the Most High God. We begin to walk in the confidence of the Most High God. We begin to really know who we are. So understanding your potential will cause you to line up with the word of the most high God. He's king of kings and lord of lords. Therefore, we're walking in our rulership. We're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Hallelujah. Serving a holy God. Kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. And when we understand that, we begin, we begin to come out of darkness into his marvelous light. We begin to exercise our faith now. We begin to walk out of darkness and begin to understand we are the light of the world. When we begin to walk in that authority, we begin to understand, come on now, if the most high God before us, then who can be against us? A thousand may fall at my right side. Ten thousand at my left. But nine shall come near me. Because I'm understanding my potential. That I don't wrestle against flesh and blood. That I know right now that my principles will work over principalities. I know and understand that the authority that the Most High God has given me. He has given me 613 keys that I can bind and loose in the earth realm. Because I'm a kingdom citizen. I abide in his law. Therefore, he abides in me. He said if I love him, that I would keep his commandments. Come on now. We're getting wiser and stronger in the most high God. Because he's ordering our steps in his word now as we get some understanding. We're no longer ignorant 
of Hasatan devices. The most I got said, we're no longer ignorant of Hasatan devices. I see you, enemy. And guess what? I know I got Michael on assignment for me to war in the atmosphere. Come on, Michael, and war for me. I know I got Raphael on assignment that'll bring healing. Hallelujah and bless your name. I know I got Uriel that will shed light on any dark place. And Gabriel will bring the message of discernment. Ooh. Sounds like I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. Greater is he. That is in me. Than he that was ever. In this world. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on now. When the enemy comes in like a flood. My God shall lift up a standard. Against him. Come on most high God. The most high God is giving you. Encouragement for the journey. No matter what you're going through. He's letting you know. All you got to do is tap into your potential and understand it. Hallelujah. And bless your name this morning, the Most High God. All right, Most High. I, I, I think we're getting it now. He said, I wish you would live a defeated life. I, would you, I wish you would live a defeated life. I made you in my image and my likeness. I blew the very breath of life into you. Yes. And you became a living soul. And not only did you become a living soul, I gave you an anchor for your soul. If you would understand your potential. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Ooh, I gave you my 613 principles. To apply to your life. So when you get into a bind. Or you think the world. As you know. Things are happening in your life. That you would apply and activate. The principles in your life. You better not be afraid or scared of anything. I've given you 613 principles. And then I put my spirit. Oh Lord. On the inside of you. I put my spirit. In your inward parts. I spoke to myself. When I thought about you. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name. That's enough right there for you to understand who you are. That he thought about himself. When he created you. Oh my goodness. Let us make man. What he say? Let us make man. In our own image. In our own likeness. Yes. And let them have dominion. Over the earth. Over the beasts. Of the field. Let them subdue it. He gave you a mandate. You better stand up and know. That you're standing on the promises. Of the most high God. You better stand up. And realize you standing on the promises. Of the most high God. Yeah. Oh come on chosen people. Come on chosen people. Many are called. But few are chosen. Yeah. Come on he chose you. He chose you. He chose you. Many are called. But few are chosen. You are the chosen. What you doing around here? Falling apart. The most I got to say, no, no, no. You might be in this world, but you're not of this world. You might be in this world, but you are not of this world. Not you. Right. Oh, Lord. It's going to be like that. It's going to be just like that this morning. I need them to understand their potential. What they're made of. Oh, Lord. You do not lose. Get to, get to the book of Revelation. In the end, we win. Yes. You're not going to lose. In the end, we win. Yes. Get to the end of the story. In the end, we win. Hallelujah. And bless your name. Ooh, the enemy didn't want you to know that. The enemy wants to get in your mind and play all kind of tricks with your mind. And the most high God say, no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. The enemy can't play with your mind when you understand your potential. Oh, Lord. So, so good. 
We wonder why that we are under all kinds of attacks. Because we're chosen. I mean, we can't be hated all over the world. Come on now. We ain't just hated in the United States of America. We hate it all over the world. How somebody gonna hate you like that if you ain't chosen? Well. Shake them haters off. That's what I was told. Shake the haters off. You better shake them haters off. They mad. They mad. Because no matter what, we keep standing. No matter what, we keep coming back. No matter what. So something has to be on the inside of us that we don't understand that we haven't tapped into because we keep standing. That's it. No matter what. That's it. We keep coming right on back. They be like, man, we can't even kill him off. No, you can't. Nope. You can't. We just keep coming right on back. I mean, the way the Most High God made us, come on now. We got some resistance, y'all. Yes. We might not think we do, but we got some resistance. The only thing that we need to tap into and to realize is that we have inherited our forefathers' lives. Therefore, we don't understand our potential. Right. Oh, you better step on the head, Holy Ghost. That's our problem. We have inherited our forefathers lies so we don't understand our potential. Because we were lied to. Ooh -wee. And we believe the lie. And they make that lie so subtle. You know when they come in, it's so subtle like the enemy. I, I, I mean, come on. You got to understand your potential. Come on. I'm so serious right now. We inherited our forefathers' lives. So that's the reason why we have to teach this Torah over and over and over again. I mean, because we've been brainwashed. So we got to wash our brains, our minds, our hearts with the word of the Most High God. What did he say about us? I will be your God. And you shall be my people, yeah. Israel. Yeah. But we disconnected ourselves from Israel. Oh, Lord. Come on, Hebrews. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Understand your potential. Man, when we wake up, we will be a powerful nation. Yeah. Yeah. A powerful tribe. When Judah wakes up, because the Most High God said the scepter will never depart from the hand of Judah. Wake up and understand your potential. Wake up and understand your potential. Oh, Lord. I'm excited. I'm so excited that I'm getting like rediscovered, reestablished, revived. It's something that's taking place right now in the earth realm. Yes. The nations are waking up. Yes, yes. There's something that's taking place in the earth realm right now. Ooh, and they scared. The nations uh, are waking up. And we staying woke. Yes. Oh, no, we're not going back to sleep. No, nope, won't fall for that, won't fall for that, and won't fall for that either. You got a new generation on your hand. You got a Joshua generation. You got a Caleb generation. We are Israel. Hallelujah and bless your name. We're like Jacob being transformed into Israel. I won't let go until you bless me. Oh, Lord. It has to be a transformation. It has to be a conversion in order for you to understand your potential. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. And bless your name. I'm so glad he called for separation. I don't know about anybody else, but aren't you glad he called for separation? Yeah. 
He's separating us now. He's pulling us out one by one. He's separating us now. I understand now why he had to scatter us to the nation so they could be a rise up. Ooh. Woo! So we could rise up. Hidden in different places. That sounds like an over, overthrow, overtake to me. Hallelujah. A straight takeover. What you say? Rise it up. I mean, the nations are just planted everywhere. Rise up. Ooh. And I can hear Moses saying, Lord, rise up. Let my enemies be scared. Yes. I'm understanding my potential. Y'all might not be getting nothing out of this uh, study that we've been doing, but I'm understanding my potential. Yes. I wish I would fall under any pressure. Ooh, I'm like, come on now. Maya Angelo, still I rise. What you say? Yes, still I rise. Ooh, -wee. that's what I'm talking about. That's the kind of confidence you walk in when you understand your potential operating in the principles of the Most High God. I need y'all to type in the comments, still, I rise. Still, I rise. Ooh That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Lord. He has the power and he done given us the authority. If we would just walk it out. Still, I rise. You know, and I thought about it. I said, wow, you know, 5 a.m. prayer, you know, we haven't posted not one moment of black history. <laughs> that just, you know, that thought just came in my spirit. And I know there's nobody but the most high God. He said, you know, we haven't posted not one thing about this month being black history month. And the most high God said, you want to know why? <laughs> I said, why most high God? Because the Bible yeah. is your black history. Uh -huh. From Genesis to Revelation. I can't fit that into one month. I'm teaching you every day about your black history. Uh-oh. What you say, Most High God? Yes. You don't need a black history moment. Every moment is black. Oh, what you say? Uh -huh. Yes. We're fading to black now. Understanding our potential every day, every second is a black history moment. Come on now. Yes. Oh, there it is. So we ain't gotta make any posts about Black History Month and a black history moment. Yes. This very moment that you're in right now yes. is a black history moment. Thank you, Most High God, because I was like, I see people, you know, posting so-and-so, you know, invented this and invented that. He said, everything you look at, we invented. Everything you look at, we invented it. But we don't understand our potential. We let somebody tell us who we are. And that's the way we operate. What they told us about ourselves. For surely, we have inherited our forefathers' lives, but not no more. We're understanding our potential, and we're coming out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ooh-wee! Hello? You are a black history moment. Open up Genesis. When he created Adam and Eve, that was your black history moment. Hallelujah. Open up Genesis, and when the Most High God spoke the word, it, the world into existence, that was your black history moment. Ahia, Asha, Ahia. What you say? Yeah. 
That was your black history moment. When Moses stepped on the scene, he stepped on the scene before Martin Luther King never had a dream. He was already on the mountaintop. Woo, Lord. Yeah. That's the reason why Martin Luther King could say I had a dream. Because that was the same thing Moses stepped on the mountaintop. What you say? Oh, we going to roll through the Bible for a second with a black history moment. When Zipporah, huh, huh, understood that when the Most High tells you to do something, you got to be obedient to that instruction. Yeah. So when she took her son and circumcised her son anyway and threw the skin at the foot of Moses, do you really think she could have been anything but a black woman? Oh, oh Lord. Oh, yeah. Zipporah was a black woman. You know we like cutting folks. <laughs> I'll cut you. Hang on your black history moment. Come on, yeah. on Zipporah. Yeah. Rise up. Yeah. I need some witnesses right now. Yeah. Giving me my black history moment. Coming from Genesis to Revelation. Ooh-wee. Isaiah talked about him. Isaiah talked about him. Come on, Isaiah the prophet. Isaiah talked about him. Unto us a child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his head. And Yeshua. Uh-oh. You mean Jesus is black? Oh, Lord, this is a black history moment. And Yeshua stepped on the scene. Yes. Sorry, people. <laughs> this is your black history moment. Yeshua is black. <gasps> oh, oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. Jiggle your black history moment. From Genesis to Revelation. Ooh. Hello, somebody. So that's the reason why 5 a.m. Pray ain't posted no uh, black history moments. Because we're reading it every single day. From Genesis to Revelation. That's our black history book. Oh, Lord. Only if we knew. Yes. Only if we knew. Come on, Jeremiah. Only if we knew. You mean everybody in the Bible was black? Yeah. You didn't know? All of them. Mm -hmm. yes. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Hosea. You didn't know? Moses. Yes. You didn't know? Yes. Sarah. You didn't know? Yes. Oh, well, let me wake you up now. Those are our inventors from the beginning. Now I understand my potential. I'm talking about a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's who we are. Still, I rise. Ooh, most high God. Did you just take us through a black history moment? Yes. And I did it on purpose. Yes, yes. On February the 14th. <laughs> As they're celebrating uh, Valentine's Day. Ah, that pagan holiday. Oh, Stephanie said, no, I didn't know, Dr. J. You didn't know, Stephanie? Yes, girl. Yes, yes. You know how they always say, oh, color don't matter. Until we start telling you everybody in the Bible black, all of a sudden it matter now. Now they got to say, uh, we don't even have to talk about that. Oh, we got to talk about it. Come on. Let God be true. Yes. And every man a liar. Mm. You can't stop us. Uh, oh, you thought you could. No. The God that I serve on, will deliver us. Yes, yes. The God that I serve will deliver us. Oh, Lord. All right, most high God. Yes, yes. I was about to pull out that little calendar. You know that little calendar that, you know, Rabbi Messer gave us when we was in the synagogue and he taught us on that everybody in the Bible was black. I started to pull that out. The most high God said, you don't need to do that. Just read the Bible. <laughs> what you say? You don't need nobody telling you that everybody in the Bible was black. Read the Bible. Oh, Lord. Okay. I was going.
going to go get that as a reference. Oh, your reference is the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Uh, uh, what you say, Most High God? Oh, yeah. yeah. Your reference is the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. You better let them know right now that uh, the first uh, Jews were Ethiopians. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What you say? Uh-huh, while y'all over there in Israel and putting up your blue flags and stuff. Oh, the first original Jews was Ethiopians. They actually did an operation. Until Israel looked at them like, oh, they might find out that they the real ones. <laughs> they did an operation to take all the Ethiopian Jews back to Israel. Until they found out that it would be a takeover. So even in Israel, they're still fighting against racism. They're still fighting against it. Everyone in the Bible is black. Okay, that's your black history moment today. Read the Bible. Because I was saying to myself, you know, when we was in school, they didn't teach black history. The most high God said, just keep reading your Bible. That's your black history. That is your history. That is your history. That is your history. And so I continue to say, like, what does it matter if, if they're white or black, right, Stephanie? What does it matter? What matters is truth. What matters is, is the truth. That's just the bottom line. It's the truth. I, I never looked at the word and said, oh, color. You know what I'm saying? I, because I was saying, hey, shoot. Hanging in my grandmother's living room, there was this white Jesus on the wall. So I didn't have any choice but to believe he was blonde hair, blue eyes. You know that Malibu Jesus that Rabbi Messer talk about. But that's not who he is. Go to Revelation. Go to Revelation. It says his skin was like bronze and his hair was like wool. I'm sorry. That Jesus on y'all wall can't be no, his hair is not like no wool. And his skin is not bronze unless he got to go get a tan at all times. He's in the tanning bed. No. He was black. He is black. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. Yeah. Black. Oh, she did that. All right, Mosa. I'm trying to get to understanding your potential. You done did this on yesterday, too. He was like, yeah. In order to understand, yeah. I got to wake up my people. Oh. Yeah. I got to wake up my people. In order for you to understand the word of the Most High God. Maybe if you saw your image for real, you'll understand the authority yes. that I have given you. Yes. Oh, there it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there it is. And that is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me the Most High God. Yeah. If, if you if you want to, you know, because sometimes y'all got to test stuff like she said that. You, I heard about it. Go to stbm.org. <laughs> Order you a black calendar. <laughs> Get you a black history moment. <laughs> but all you need is the word of the most high God. She put that out there. She did. Uh-huh. Because sometimes y'all don't believe it until you know somebody else tell you. Of a different color skin, but anyway. All right, she said that too. All right, Most High God. Let's let God be true. And every man a liar. Ooh-wee. Hey, my sisters and brothers, power to the people. <laughs> <coughs> Hallelujah. And bless your name. Hallelujah and bless your name. And let me tell you one thing. I wish somebody would send us an email or anything trying to say like we're racist. It's funny how when black folks love on black folks, all of a sudden now we racist. Oh, Dr. J said everybody in the Bible is black, which she must don't like white people. No! I'm telling you the truth. Every time we stand up, we got to be racist. I don't understand that. My black is beautiful. Period. 
Oh, Lord. Most high, what you doing? I'm giving you a black history moment. Just grow with me. Okay. My black is beautiful. My black, as a matter of fact, he called me very good. My black is very beautiful. Oh, Lord. All right, most high God. I'm understanding my potential. Ha, ha, ha. I don't know about nobody else. I'm understanding my potential. Ooh. Happy Black History Month on Valentine's Day. Ain't that funny? <laughs> For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. If you love me, ooh, come on Valentine's Day, keep my commandments. <laughs> Separate me from the love of the Most High God. Not even your pagan Valentine's Day. I wish you would say some happy Valentine's Day. I'll cut somebody like the poor. I love him. I love him. I love him. I said he waited all the way to the 14th. Because I was like, we ain't posted nothing. You know who that girl that, you know, invented that straightening comb. Straighten our hair out. What that, what her name is? Uh, you know, Bethune, Cookman, or somebody like that. I was like, we ain't talking about nobody getting my hair straight. You know what I'm saying? But now we ain't straightening out here no more. We're going natural. That's bothering the world. Whoa, hire us because we got afros now. You scared. <laughs> wow. Power to the people. Firing news anchors and stuff. Because she came to work one day and didn't have her hair straight, had an afro. Oh, that's offensive. Your afro is bothering me. <laughs> the things y'all do. Wow. I mean, we, I, I, we can't do nothing. Mm. I'm so serious. It's the crazy things that go on. For real. You got to know you're chosen. Go on Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read that. That's your black history moment. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Go do your homework today. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 28, tell me who you see. Just read it. Right. Everybody today. That's going to be your black history homework. Right. <laughs> read Deuteronomy chapter 28, but read it with your eyes open. As I just told you that everybody in the Bible was black. Read it now with your eyes open. Ooh. It's Valentine's Day, Most High. Leave them people alone. <laughs> Leave them alone. It's Valentine's Day. They trying to love folks today. They told to love on one day. Shoot. If we would knew, if we know who we are, oh my goodness. We wouldn't be killing each other and all that kind of foolishness. It's enough. They killing us. We gonna kill ourselves too? Our attack is on every side. Our ignorance, because we don't know who we are, we come against ourselves. That's what we do when we're coming against ourselves. Because we don't understand who we are. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So, all right. Dun, 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 dun. No, it's not Roots. <laughs> Da, 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 da. No, it's not Alice Haley. No, no, no. It's Genesis chapter 1. In its entirety. Oh, Lord. It's Deuteronomy chapter 28. In its entirety. Oh, we, were, we didn't come in as no slaves now. Y'all better stop that. Uh, uh, that's when our history was interrupted. Let's get that straight. Black history did not start with slavery. That's when our history was interrupted. Yes. We are kings and queens. You better know it. Kings and queens. Period. You better know it. Folks think we started on a, on a boat somewhere. No, we did not. No, we did not. We started in the Garden of Eden. And then here you go, all these scientists now. And, and I love it when these scientists say, oh, the first bone found 
Lois in Eden was a black man. What y'all say? <laughs> it's all on the news. The oldest living bones was from a black woman. What you say? Y'all just waking up. Y'all just waking up, huh? But y'all gave us this Bible, though. <laughs> Didn't know when we understood it, it could be used as a weapon. Once you understand, once you understand, no longer are you ignorant of Hasatan devices. And I love Paul Wilbur, Stephanie. Yeah, girl, put that up there. I love him. His music is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the one who sings the great I am, Paul Wilbert, Shannon Wilbert, beautiful woman. Okay. I'm trying to understand. Okay. But yeah, I like that song. The great I am. The great I am. Yes. That's bomb.com. All right. That was your black history moment. Hello, somebody. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Tell me who you see. Tell me who you see. When you read it. Tell me who you see. You know, I think about Rabbi Messer, and I have to mention him, because I love him. I do. When he said, um, the reason why he wanted to teach black people. <laughs> Come on, Rabbi Messer. Uh, because their story is just like the children of Israel. Right. And 85% of the people that he teaches is black. It's just, you know. But if they will wake up and realize they are Israel, they ain't just like Israel. They are Israel. Yes. Um, yes. Be a whole totally different ball game. And I'm, I'm thankful for him for that. Because, I mean, not even in the church, all jokes aside, not even in the church did they put out a black history calendar. At least Rabbi Messer did. <laughs> you, you, when you recognize something, you, 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 you got to teach it. You, you, you can't, you know, just leave that part out. You can't leave it out. So I'm thankful for Rabbi Ralph Messer that he did put out a black history calendar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We wasn't taught about black history in the church. They didn't know. They still trying to talk about Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, all that. Can we get to Genesis first, please? Yes. Before we even get to that. Yes. You know, the first march, you know, and... Martin Luther King marching in Alabama. Can we get that first march when we march out of Egypt? That's the first march. That's the original march. When we walked out of Egypt, that was the first march. We ain't just start marching Black Lives Matter. We was walking out of Egypt. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> that was the first walkout, baby. Orchestrated by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Hebrew-speaking God, the God of Israel. Come on, black history moment. That was our first march. That's the reason why we keep marching. Because <laughs> we're going to march ourselves straight into freedom. Because we ain't free. <laughs> Just look like it. We still in Babylon. We still in exile. We're the greatest exodus, and we're about to march up out of here. With the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So yes, you can actually go on stbm.org and get you a black history calendar. Yes. I love it. Most high God, you go. You go, most high God. You know I could have did this. You go. I love him. I love how he deals with me. I got up this morning like late, like, oh, it is 4.52. Most of the guys said, you still got time. You got plenty of time because I got a black history moment for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, most high God. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. And glory to your name. Woo, most high. I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. The ones that are listening live and the ones that will go back and listen later. Give them a revelation. Of your word. Have the scales to fall off of their eyes. 
circumcise their heart. Have them to understand their potential. I thank you right now for the Holy Spirit that is going to lead and guide us into all truth. Oh, Lord, rise up. I know it's not by power nor by might, but it's by your spirit. Ooh, Lord. And you doing a new thing this morning. It's springing up all around us. Ooh, we. I'm thankful for understanding. Because the title of this book by Dr. Miles Monroe is Understanding Your Potential. Your word says through all your getting, get an understanding. I will no longer have you ignorant of Hasatan devices. Now let the scales fall off. I will forever give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. Yeah. Ooh, he did that. Oh, there's a method style to our study. Right. And it's a process of studying the word of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which is I am, that I am in Hebrew. The great I am. The God. Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. And we seek his guidance. And live in a kingdom lifestyle. Yes. The Torah. God's teachings and instructions. And 613 principles. As well. The creator speaks mother. Yes. And then we search the witnesses. Through the books of the prophets. The never ends. And the books of the writings. The Ketavins. Yes. Collectively the Torah. The never is in the Ketavins, or identify as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied in reference throughout the New Testament. Jeremiah, ooh, you better shut up, law, prophets, and writings on a black history moment. Jeremiah. Chapter 16, verse 3. For thus says the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place and concerning their mothers that bear them and concerning their fathers that begat them in this land. Today we look to the word born. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Heroes. 3205, you lad, to bear, bring forth, beget, travail, to cause or help to bring forth. Ooh, you better come on, most high God. The Torah testifies. Genesis chapter 48, verse 5. And now thou two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, were born, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt. Before I came unto thee into Egypt are mine. And Reuben and Simeon, they shall be mine. Black history moment. The prophets proclaim Isaiah chapter 9. Oh, Lord. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful, yeah. Counselor, yeah. the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The writings bear witness. This is a black history moment. Psalm chapter 78, verse 6. That the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born, which shall arise in the 
your clan them to their children. What you say? <laughs> What's going on? Yes. Help me, somebody. <clears throat> I'm going to establish what I said about black history, Dr. J. Yes, yes. That's what's going on. You were born for such a time as this. For real. To rise up. Psalms chapter 78 verse 6. That the generation to come might know them. Even the children which should be born. Who should arise and declare them to their children? Oh, black history moment now. We have completed the method style of study this morning. Reviewing a black history moment uh, 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 and recognizing the word born. First, we recognize the Torah set in the standard and, and, and the 613 principles. Then we search the witnesses. Oh, Lord, through the books of the prophets, the never ease, and Isaiah agrees with me. And the books of the writings, the Ketavis, collectively the Torah, the never ease in the Ketavis, or identify as the Tanakh, or as some refer to it, the Old Testament, which is the only book that Yeshua studied and referenced throughout the New Testament. 5 a.m. prayer. The Most High is bringing us forth according to all of the stored potential that is within us that he placed there from the beginning from within himself. Yes. Mm -hmm. I read that kind of different right there because I saw us. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66 verse 8. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once, O oh Lord? Yes, yes. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Mm. Oh my goodness. Shalom, Allah came. Peace be unto you, Father, in prayer community. Now that we are no longer walking in the wisdom of the world's black history moment, but his true and righteous understanding and applying his principles to our lives, we are rebirth. Oh, Lord. In his order and function. Rebirth of a nation. Before there was a Nate Turner, uh, there was a Moses. Oh, Lord! Yes, yes. Rebirth yes, yes, yes. of a nation. So now, are you ready for the word of God? I'm scared. The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. Yes. Are you ready? Ready for the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. This morning, we are coming out of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 139 in its entirety. Again, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 139 in its entirety, and it reads, O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Yes. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, that knoweth it altogether, yes. that thou be set me behind and before, 
and lay thou hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and the well in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thou hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. What you say? The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret. And curiously walked in the lowest parts of the earth. Thy eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which is continuance were fashioned, when as yet there were none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me. O oh God, how great is the sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked. O oh God, depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly, and thou enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them. O oh Lord, that hate thee, and am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. What you say? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. May the most high God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his most holy word. I can't. I can't. Why? Were we born? Uh-oh. Rebirth of a nation. Why were you born? No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. What you say, Eleanor Roosevelt? No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. The people I have met who are progressing in life and affecting other people's lives, people like Dale Cartney, a tremendous man who has touched many people's lives, or Robert Soto, who has ministered to people all over the world to help them improve their self-esteem, all seem to say the same thing. If you feel good, about yourself. You will feel good about other people. In other words, only after you see yourself in the Bible as a worthwhile person can you appreciate others as worth 
wow people. If you feel good about yourself, you will feel good about other people. That's a very important insight because many people do not feel good about themselves. Wonder why? They look at themselves and wonder why the Most High made them. Or they doubt that anyone can find any good in them. But remember, the Most High sees what others and what we ourselves can't see. The Most High looks at us and sees that we are worth feeling good about. The Most High looks at us and sees that we are worth feeling good about. We are special to the Most High. We are valuable and important. The Most High planned your life. What you say? The Most High planned your life. The crowning work of creation. You better come on, Black History Moment. The crowning work of creation came on the sixth day when the Most High created human beings. As he looked around him, the Most High pronounced his creation to be good. Shut up. That includes you. The Most High looked at Man and the woman he had made and declared them to be very good. Stop it. The Most High has a good attitude towards you. He created you in his image and drew you out of himself before you were born. You were in the Most High. Part of his potential has been placed within you. Do you remember the verse which suggested could be considered as the first verse in the Bible? Shut up. Before the beginning was, the most high is. I can't. Before the beginning was, the most high is. Genesis chapter 1, verse 0. The Most High is so big. He began the beginning. Before the beginning began. In the beginning, before the beginning began. Go on now, Rabbi Messer. There could not be a beginning without the Most High. Because the Most High got start. Because the Most High got start started. Because the Most High got start, started. <laughs> before start, started, however, before the beginning began, the Most High had a finished plan for your life. Come on, Dr. Miles Monroe. Your potential is not a trial and error experience. The Most High designed and predetermined you to be a success story. The Most High designed and predetermined you to be a success story. Psalms chapter 139 tells us that the Most High planned each of your days before you were even born. Before you were formed, the Most High knew you. Before the beginning began. <laughs> before start got started. What you say? You good. You good. <clears throat> before start got started. Before the beginning began. Stop it. No part of your being was made without the most high's knowledge and careful concern. The most high wants each of us. He gives us what no other part of his creation received. His breath of life. Ooh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. You are not a mistake. Have you ever felt like you were a mistake? You are not a mistake. Have you ever felt like you are a mistake? Have your parents told you that they wish you were never born? Are you a child whose parents has told you, I wish you would have died when you were a baby? You may have come into this world as a result of rape, 
Your mother may have hated you in the womb because you reminded her of a man she wished to forget. But the fact that you were conceived, come on, most high God. But the fact that you were conceived is more important than how you are conceived. What you say? People go around dealing with how things happened. People go around dealing with how things happened. But the Most High is simply concerned with the fact that he allowed your conception to happen. Right. Now, when I say allow, ooh, I've been saying that the Most High allowed it. I'm talking about the fact that you were conceived. You may be a bastard, conceived out of wedlock, being omnipotent. The Most High had the power to prevent your conception. Yet the Most High allowed it because he wanted you to show up. Ooh, come on now. You are here because the Most High wanted you to be born. How you came isn't important. What matter is that you are here. And if you are here, the Most High created you with care. Psalm chapter 139 verse 13. Come on, Israel. Wake up. We here. Hallelujah. You are here because the Most High wanted you to be born. King David doesn't describe your mother in Psalms chapter 139. She may have been an old alcoholic or drug addict, a bastard or a prostitute. He is concerned with you. What you say, Most High? He is concerned with you. He describes how the Most High knitted you together in your mother's womb without describing th what that womb was like. The womb in which you were knitted together is no longer important. You are important. Your, your very existence means that the Most High wants you to exist. You are somebody special simply because you were born. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord. You are somebody special simply because you were born. The Most High saw you in your mother's womb when you were a tiny baby, a one centimeter embryo. He looked into the secret place. Oh, Lord. In your mother's womb. And he saw you. From the second your father's sperm and your mother's egg joined to form a child, the Most High tenderly created you and watched you grow. The Most High never would have allowed the sperm and the egg to come together if he had not planned for you to be born. Come on, Most High! My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place. Oh, Lord. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. Psalms chapter 139 verse 15 and 16. Although some parents feel their baby is a mistake, their thoughts are not true. The most high plan for that baby to be born. The manner in which the child was conceived may not have been in the most high's plan, but the child himself is surely part of the most high's plan. Those of you who were brought up in a nice family with a mother and father who love you may not understand those who have been put down by their family since the day of their birth. Ooh wee. You may not understand how important it is to them to know that they are not mistakes. You are not a mistake. Be patient with them. Help them to see 
that the Most High designed them long before. They were born. Every child who comes into this world comes as a setup from the Most High. That little boy or girl doesn't need to arrive to see what is going to happen because the happening was already set up before he or she came. The Most High has a book on you. You better stop it. The Most High has a book on you. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. What you say? Everything that has happened in my life, I said this yesterday, is the most high God's purpose and he allowed it. For whatever reason, he allowed it. Because he got a book on me. What you say? He got a book on me. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I'm hoping this is setting somebody free. Because a lot of times we think we done failed, we done made mistakes, we done did this, we're horrible, we're no good. But the Most High God said, I got a book on you. It was already written. If you would just keep on walking, my, 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 oh Lord, I don't know if the heat was on before we started, but a sister is hot up in here, and that's in my book, oh Lord, Psalms 139, verse 16, the most high destined or designed you to be somebody, the most high designed you to be somebody. He looked at your unformed body and declared, this child is good. All his plans for your life were set out long before you took a breath. He wrote out the order of your days before you, oh Lord, lived even one day. Psalms chapter 139 verse 16 there's a book on you. What you say? There's a book on you. Some chapters the most high wrote about you haven't even been touched yet. Some of you are playing around in the index or you have spent years in the table of contents. Perhaps you are 30 years old and you still don't know the most high plan for your life. What you say? Perhaps you are 30 years old and you still don't know the most high's plan for your life. That's playing around on the content page. That's playing around on the content page. You are 30 years old and still wondering what you are supposed to be. You haven't even started yet. Others have jumped ahead of the Most High's plan, though his design calls for you to be married in chapter 17. You got married in chapter 2. What you say? What you say? Yeah, yeah. Though his design calls for you to be married in chapter 17, you got married in chapter 2. You have ignored the things the Most High wanted you to learn and experience in chapter 2 through 16. So you would be prepared for marriage in chapter 17. You have missed out. On many experiences and discoveries because you moved ahead of the most high schedule. Some people are so busy peeking into chapter 17, they don't, oh Lord, they don't have time to live in chapter 2 and 3 and 4, or perhaps you have pulled chapter 
17 into chapter 2 so that the rest of the book is destroyed. Oh my goodness. Can we go back over that? Yeah. I'm talking about you. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. You know, I remember somebody yesterday, I was talking to them and they was like, I sure wish that, you know, all the words, you know, it's just about me and it's just not good. <laughs> and then you look at the word today and say, oh, it could be good. He's still writing your chapter. <laughs> you are 30 years old and still wondering what you are supposed to be. You haven't even started yet. Others have jumped ahead of the Most High's plan. Though he designed, though his design calls for you to be married in chapter 17. You got married in chapter 2. You have ignored the things the Most High wanted you to learn and experience in chapter 2 through 16. So you would be prepared for marriage in chapter 17. You have missed out on many experiences, I know, and discoveries because you moved ahead of the most high schedule. Some people are so busy peeking into chapter 17, they don't have time to live chapters 2, 3, and 4, or perhaps you have pulled chapter 17 into chapter 2, so the rest of the book is destroyed. You will never have the opportunity to experience all the chapters if you pull parts of later chapters into early ones. Y'all better be paying attention to this teaching. This is serious. This is serious. You know, sometimes we be living life and we be like, why this ain't happening in my life? Why this ain't happening to my life? Because you skipped chapter 2 through 16. Out of your disobedience. You just went straight to chapter 17 and you were not bit more ready for no marriage. Boom, there it is. Disobedience. 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 You know we have an ear to hear from the Most High God. He instructs us. He has his teachings. And he has given us discernment, his Holy Spirit. And we just be like, mm -mm, no, nah, it's been too long. I'm ready now. I'm ready right now. And the most I got it said, no, that was for chapter 17. But you done made your 17 chapter 2. Oh, Lord. You will never have the opportunity to experience all the chapters if you pull parts of later chapters into earlier ones. The Most High offers you a rewrite. The Most High offers you a rewrite. The Most High wants to take you back to the beginning. That's where I'm at. What? This is my life. I see why you got me all calm today. Because just that was all you know. He said no because I need you to hear. I need you to teach this. Because everything about the teachings is your life. I'm on a rewrite. Mm -hmm. I'm offering you a rewrite. <coughs> Excuse me. Who Lord. Try not to cry. <clears throat> the Most High offers you a rewrite. The Most High wants to take you back to the beginning. Because his plans far outreach your plans. His design for you, for your life, is so great that King David describes it as vast in Psalms chapter 139, verse 17. You are thinking about 
being a teacher while the Most High wants you to open a school? Huh? I'm offering you a rewrite. You are thinking about being a teacher while the Most High wants you to open a school. You have plans to be a clerk while the Most High wants you to own the store. You want to work in a neighboring town while the Most High wants you to go to Africa. You often cheat yourself because you don't realize the potential you have. Why settle to be a doorman when the Most High wants you to own the house? David says it this way. The Most High, when I look at your thoughts in the book on me, it's like all the sands in the ocean. Your thoughts are endless. I can't fathom your confidence in me. The Most High designed you to live out the careful plans he prepared for you. You are made in the Most High's image. The plan he wrote for you is perfect and right. No detail or part of it is missing. You have the potential to live out all that the Most High has planned for your life, but only if you accept your citizenship in the kingdom of heaven that Yeshua HaMashiach came to teach us about through his principles and instructions found in the Torah. That's the first step towards understanding why you were born. Though you messed up the Most High's perfect plan for your life, He graciously offers to write another book for you. It probably won't be the bestseller the first book was designed to be, but at least the Most High gives you a chance to start over. He comes and puts you back in chapter one so you can live the many details, his plans, the precepts and oracles of the king of kings. That's what living in the renewed covenant is all about. It's the opportunity to start over. It's finally getting back to the first chapter of the Most High's book on you. The Most High has great plans for you. That's why he gave you life. Self-acceptance. What you say? Self-acceptance is the key to healthy self-esteem. Accept yourself. Accept yourself as the Most High made you. Allow his power to transform your weakness rather than belittling yourself when you make mistakes. Born to expose his nature. Born to expose his nature. Not only did the Most High carefully plan for the details of your life, he also determine how your life would fit into his total plan for man. Part of the answer to part of the answer to the why of our birth is revealed in the most high's desire that we should show forth his glory. The glory of the most high is the excess of his nature. It's all the potential of our omnipotent. The most high that has not yet been revealed. He's full of so much more than we can think or imagine. And he's waiting to use us to realize that potential. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all. We ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Yeshua throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21. Throughout the Bible, the Most High tells us to make his name great in the earth. 
Throughout the Bible, the Most High tells us to make his name great in the earth. Praise and thanks are due the Most High's name, which is great and awesome. Psalms chapter 44 verse 8. Psalms chapter 99 verse 3. His name is to be proclaimed among the nations. Malachi chapter 1 verse 11. As well as in Israel. Psalms chapter 76 verse 1. His name is holy in Luke chapter 1 verse 49. Psalms chapter 99 verse 3. And mighty in power. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 6. Everything is done for his name's sake. To understand this concept, we must also understand that the Hebrew concept of name literally is a synonym with the object. In other words, the name of the thing is the thing. What you say? In other words, the name of the thing is the thing. Therefore, the name of the Most High is himself, and he is his name. Right. To glorify his name then means exposing his nature. What you say? To glorify his name then means exposing his nature. The Most High created you to bring glory to his name. His predestined plan for your life was designed to bring him glory. He knows there is more to you than we can see because he placed part of himself in you. His plan for your life is part of his creative work. Through you, the Most High wants to continue the birth of his potential because you share the most high's omnipotent nature. Yeshua said you can do even greater things than he did if you only believe. Mark chapter 11 verse 23. Knock the limits off your life. What you say? Knock the limits off your life. Say it again, Dr. J. Knock the limits off your life. The concept of Mark chapter 11 is that if you ask anything, if you believe, if you can believe what you desire hard enough, the Most High says, it will be done because you keep his commandments. You operate in the Torah. You understand the teachings and instructions. So anything you ask, it shall be done. Somehow, the Most High gives us a little glimpse into our potential. He comes into our situations as if he disturbed. What? He comes into our situation as if he's disturbed. The Most High is disappointed in the human race. It's almost as though the Most High looks at the ideas he stored in us and says with a voice of disappointment, if you only knew what you can do. That's the attitude of the Most High towards you and me. The Most High is totally disappointed in us because he knows what we can do, but we don't. And so he says to us, all things are possible if you just believe, dummy. He's always knocking the limits off of our lives. Too often we are not willing to believe like the Most High defines us to believe. The Most High does not say everything is possible if you get the idea. Things don't become a reality because we have an idea. We have to believe in the idea. We have to believe in the Torah, the concepts of the Most High God, His 613 principles. We have to believe we can do it by committing ourselves to it. 
abandoning ourselves to it. Even if it costs us our lives. That's what it takes to believe in Yeshua HaMashiach to lose our lives. To abandon ourselves. We must say, I'm going to go into eternity believing in Yeshua. I'm not sure what's out there, but I'm going to ride on that name and that atonement. The most high is it impressed by your dreams. Most of us never wake up long enough to do anything with our dreams. You may have great dreams for your life, but you prefer to stay asleep because you, because when you wake up, reality says, okay, Let's get to work. It's easier to dream an idea than to work it out. What you say? It's easier to dream an idea than to work it out. Everything is possible if you will abandon yourself to an idea enough that you are willing to lose your life for it. Thinking is great. But all things are possible when we believe. Yeshua said in Mark chapter 11. Whatever you desire when you pray. If you walk in the commandments of the most high God. Now let me tell you one thing. Your prayers are not answered. You are an abomination if you don't walk in the Torah. So Yeshua said in Mark chapter 11, whatever you desire when you pray, believe you'll receive it and you'll have it if you stand on his commandments. The word desire is the key. Being interested in or attracted to something is not desiring it. Ooh, this is good. Being interested in or attracted to something is not desiring it. To desire means, oh Lord, to crave for something at the expense of losing everything. What you say? To desire means to crave for something at the expense of losing everything. Why were you born? Why were you born? Everything is possible if you will abandon yourself to an idea enough that you are willing to lose your life for it. The Most High's work in creation began with a plan. The Most High conceived in his mind what he wanted before speaking his cre creation into visible form. By the time the Most High was ready to speak, it was just a matter of talking, excuse me, taking what was in the plan and putting it on the site. Oh, Lord. So when the Most High was ready to speak, it was just a matter of taking what was in the plan and putting it on the site. From thought to action. You better come on, Holy Ghost. From thought to action. A thought is a silent word. So a word is an exposed thought. Say it again. A thought is a silent word. So a word is an exposed thought. Everything in life starts in the thought form. It's a thought first. After it's said, it's no longer a thought. It becomes a word. Oh, Lord. The next step is an idea. An idea is the concept of the thought. It has moved into reality. Ideas are potential. The third level of operation is what I call imagination. Imagination changes an idea into a plan. If you have an idea, it can come and go. You have to. You have many ideas in a day. What to cook, what to wear, what to do. You may 
Decide the night before what you are going to wear in the morning and then wake up with a different idea. Ideas change, but if an idea develops into an imagination, it means the idea becomes a plan. Taking Torah to the nation was a thought, an idea, an imagination, and it moved into a plan of the Most High God. It is still not written or drawn, but it's in your head. Imagination is therefore a plan that is not documented. Oh, Lord. Imagination is therefore a plan that is not documented. It is a visual display of your thoughts and ideas. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 challenges us to believe the most high is able and willing to do exceedingly abundantly far beyond all we can think or imagine. He dares us to use our imagination. If you want to be successful in life, take your ideas and turn them into imaginations, then take your imagination and duplicate it physically. This is my life. Put it down. Let it become a plan action. Followers, dreamers, visionaries, and missionaries. Many people never get beyond the idea stage. And that's sad. They are usually followers. The people who get to the imagination stage often talk a lot, but they do nothing. They are dreamers. But when a woman or man takes his imagination, and put it on paper. You are looking at a visionary. Who is becoming a missionary? Come on, most I got. Visionaries see great things in their minds. Many visionaries are in the graveyard. They had visions, but their visions never made it to the mission. <coughs> I'm talking about you. I'm seeing it. When a visionary becomes a missionary, come on, Dr. J, you have a man or woman who is going to change the world. You better take Torah to the nations. Make plans. Set goals. The Most High wants us to become people who have plans. He says, use your imagination. I won't give you a thought if you can't do it. What the world? Use your imagination. I won't give you a, a thought if you can't do it. If you think it. I'm ready to do it. Wow. Come on, Biloxi, Mississippi. Wow. Come on, Gulf Coast. <laughs> if you think it, I'm ready to do it. Plans are documented. Imaginations. Ooh, Lord. Plans. Or documented imaginations. If you can document an imagination, you've developed a plan for action. What y'all say? If you can document an imagination, you've developed a plan for action. If you are having problems in your life, I mean real problems. You know, Dr. J, you be thinking you have some problems. Stop it. I mean real problems. You probably don't have a piece of paper <laughs> on which you have documented your plans for the next five years. If you are delusioned with life, 
bored and confused. I can almost guarantee that you don't know what is going on in your life. You're just living from day to day in the absence of a concrete documented plan by which to live. You've been years. You've been dealing with the same issues and habits and struggles for years. You slide forward a little only to slide backwards again. Whenever things get hard, you start reminiscing about the good old days and fall back into habits you had conquered. If there is no goal in front of you, come on, Janae. If there is no goal in front of you, you'll check the hazard holes behind you. If there is no vision in front of you to pull you on, you will be dragged back to the path you know well. If your imagination does not become documented, it will soon fragment into vapor and disillusionment. Mm -hmm. Let me explain. If you do not have a paper on which you have written a general plan for your life, you may decide something one minute only to change it five minutes later. You'll be confused, disoriented, misguided, and frustrated. Progress requires a plan of action. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Progress requires a plan of action. Ideas must be put down if they are to influence the way you live. So why were you born? Many of us plan our meals for next week, but we have nothing planned for our lives. The food we eat just goes away. It doesn't touch the future. Stop, set your course. Imagine into your future as far as you can. Chart what you are going to do for the next five months, 12 months, two years. Start imagining what you want to be. What you want to accomplish, where you want to go, who you want to influence. Do something and then put your plan in a convenient location so you can check your progress, seeing how close you are to your next goal. You will be amazed that will make, you will be amazed how that will make you work every day. It will encourage you to move. You will begin to see the most high power at work within you and that will motivate you even more. Don't worry how you are going to meet all your goals. The most high says, you make the plans and I will give the answer how it will be. Yes, yes. Accomplish. The most high created you to change the world. <laughs> the most high created you to change the world. He carefully designed a plan for your life that allows you to share in his work of creation. Because you were made in the most high's image. You share his potential to be and to do much more than is visible now. Everything you see was originally a thought in the mind of the most high. An invisible idea that the Most High worked into sight. Make a plan. Give yourself something to be motivated towards. As you dream, think, imagine, and plan who you want to be, you will begin to see why the Most High has created you and the work He has designed you to do. You are destined by the Most High. To reveal his glory and his nature. Check the principles. Number one. You are worth feeling good about. Because the most high wanted you to be born. Number two. The most high 
has a detailed plan for your life. Number three, the first step in living out the Most High's plan is accepting Yeshua HaMashiach as your Savior and Lord. Number four, the Most High created you with a part of his potential so you could expose and share in his glory. Number five, the Most High's glory is the excess, excess of his potential, his many plans that wait to be revealed through us. Number six, develop a plan for your life that fulfills some of the possibilities the most high place within you before you were born. Then believe and work them into existence. Amen, 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 and amen. My, 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 my. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So good. Oh, Lord. Oh, you need to meditate on this word. Go ahead. Oh, Lord.
so excited to be taking Torah to the nations. Join us at the beautiful White House Hotel in Biloxi, Mississippi. The address is 1230 Beach Boulevard. We're going to be starting at 9 o'clock, which is the appointed time of prayer. We're going to 3 o'clock. You still going to be in the appointed time of prayer. The great thing about this conference, this teaching on the keys, the king, and the kingdom is that it's free. So get ready and join us for a kingdom teaching. I'm talking about anointed by the most high God. So now I know the plans that he has for me. Ooh, most high God. This was so good this morning. This was encouraging. You need to listen to it over and over and over and over again today. Get this down in your very soul. Why were you born? Wow. What chapter should you be on? What chapters did you skip? The reason why your life is out of order. The reason why the Most High took the Torah and wrote it on our hearts and on our mind and our inward parts so we could understand and hear him. Because it's written on us. It's on our hearts and on our minds. So therefore that Torah is written on us. Now we can understand the plans that he has for us as we walk in his teachings and instructions, understanding your potential. Yeah. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural day five. Yeah. So good. I love you, love you, love you. Oh, I love you. You know I love you. Bye now. So good. So, so.